Daniel Epstein has traveled the world studying faith and spirituality, and now he's taken what he has learned and put it into a book. It's called Portraits in Faith, and it will be released December the 4th. Daniel, thank you for being with us. Thanks so much for having me. So let us start, as they say, at the beginning. Uh, you're traveling for P&G, and what turned your work travels into kind of this personal quest to find out more about faith and how people really use and involve their faith? Well, actually, it started with a summer vacation workshop up in Maine, where you, a photography workshop where I had to have an idea and start shooting immediately. And I grew up Jewish in the South in Atlanta, and I've always felt called to bring people together. And so uh, this idea of portraits and faith came to me. Now, funny enough, I thought it was going to be about clergy, but the first church that I went to, uh, all I could find was the janitor. And, <laughs> uh, and I and I said to him, well, when's the minister coming back? I, re you know, you, you know, I'm, I'm at this workshop and I'm doing this project. And then I realized uh, God did not put the minister in front of me. He put the janitor. And um, uh, and so I loved that the first portrait in the project was the janitor of a church. And then I uh, uh, actually had to uh, go to Brazil on business right after the workshop. And uh, my teacher from the workshop said, oh, I have a former student there, Tom, why don't you get him to find you some people? And, um, and then I had to go to Japan and Italy and, and it, just, uh, it just kind of grew from there. Why was that important to you uh, to, to really have this, this uh, venture, adventure in faith? Well, like I said, I, I grew up uh, Jewish in the South. So I grew up very much feeling like the other. Um, and um, I uh, also, I think in uh, my mid thirties, a lot of my religiosity uh, from growing up uh, didn't really help me as uh, I confronted a lot of problems in my life, problems at work, relationships. And, and I felt like I needed a deeper faith uh, this was not a search for a perfect religion, if you will. Um, I think what, in retrospect, what I was doing is I was drafting off of other people's stories of their faith. Um, I was hearing them talk about their gratitude and their hopefulness. Um, I don't think I was a very grateful person back then. I think I had a victim personality and uh, and I think what happened is, as I heard people share their stories, I became more whole, more grateful. Um, and so it, it was just like a reinforcement of uh, all that was good. Uh, and for me, because I, because I grew up uh, certainly with the understanding that there were many paths, not just one theological truth, it didn't matter to me that people were from different religions. It was, it was like I already had programmed into me that, uh, you know, it's all good. You know, if you're not harming people and you've got a path that works for you, good on you. And so I think it just reinforced that belief. 500 interviews, the photographs to go with it, more than two dozen countries. Was there, and this is, this is kind of like asking you what's your favorite child, but was there one story or one person that really made an impression, stood out among all these people you talked with? Well, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate that I have interviewed a handful of famous people, spiritually famous, uh, maybe not rock star famous, um, although I do have one rock star uh, from Croatia. But um, um, I... Uh, I have interviewed uh, Father Richard Rohr and Father Thomas Keating and uh, Reb Zalman. These are some spiritually famous people, but actually the, the one that made the biggest impression on me, which I think is gonna surprise you, is with an atheist. Um, um, and in fact, it was that first producer in Brazil, Tom. And um, it's really provocative what he said and why it's my favorite interview. Uh, he said, you know, again, from his point of view, God didn't create us, we created God. And uh, he said, that's okay, it's just a concept. And he said, I, I don't mind that concept. He says, what I think matters is that we don't think that having all this stuff is what matters. And he says, don't get me wrong, I, I like having things. I just don't want things to have me. 
Mm. And and when I uh, and when I think about it, uh, that's about as spiritual as it gets. I don't want things to have me. I, I want to be successful in life, but uh, I need to be grateful and I need to be in service to others in order to have a meaningful life. Um, I know that the atheist and the agnostic may not like their belief system called faith, uh, but um, but for me, we're, you know, we're all on a journey together. Uh, we're all uh, we are, or as Thomas Merton said, we are already one, but we know it not. Uh, so for me, that's why I love the the interview with the atheist as the most important interview in the project. Wow, that is fascinating. Um, in this time of the year where so many religions celebrate one holiday or another, what is it that you want us to take from this book, reading all these different people from all these different countries and all these different religions? What do you want us as the reader to take from this? That we are all on a journey together, that there is no other, that um, the person who we think is the other um, is just another version of ourselves. And that um, especially the person who we uh, maybe judge. Uh, you know, I saw something that really disturbed me a few days ago, an article that said that people, when they hate another group, it gives them a sense of purpose in life. Hmm. It was an academic study. And um, it just so disturbed me that it is adaptive human behavior to, to consider somebody the other, to hate another group. And I, and I think that's really the message is um, we have to somehow shift that uh, hating another group is normal human behavior. Uh, I think we have to in fact, uh, this is our new effort with the nonprofit that houses this documentary is uh, we're calling it sacred listening. I want to teach this skill of sacred listening. And I define sacred listening as receiving the story of someone you perceive to be the other. And I think the message is, is that, which is uh, really there is no other. Hmm. You yourself has worked um a lot here in the greater Cincinnati area to bring the community together to have that dialogue. This is a time in our history, not only of our nation, but, but it seems like across the world, there is such a divide. Uh, you talked about, you know, hating somebody gives somebody a purpose. Um, there seems to be so much discord within our communities across the board. What I hope do you have that listening and talking and speaking about this, even starting at the community level? What hope do you have that this might just bring us together? I believe that um, we rarely will convince somebody of our point of view. I believe the only hope we have is if we change ourselves, um, if we do the work, and I think the work can be as simple as think about the person you most consider to be the other. Um, you know, for me, uh, the other is not somebody who's African American or gay. Uh, for me, the other is the uneducated white male um, and uh, uh, who. Uh, I have a hard time relating to, and you know, I grew up with uh, in the South and who made me feel like the other. And so for me, um, I need to understand the story of that person. I need to be able to see their humanity and understand why they believe what they believe, why they vote the way they do, um, why they, uh, may make the choices they do that are different than mine. And uh, so for me, uh, my great hope is that we, we can all do that work, that we can think about who is the person we judge, who is the person who's most different from us, and let me hear their story and see their humanity. 
coming up on the book launch. The launch date is December 4th. It'll be six o'clock at the Summit Hotel. If we are interested in the launch and in the book, where do we go? Well, please go to our website, portraitsinfaith.org. Uh, the book is the first 125 portraits, quotes, and reflections uh, that we have published out of the 450. Uh, so uh, we are uh, really pleased to bring this. And I should say that the writing the reflections have been a real uh, surprise for me. I wasn't a positive that I would be uh, a writer in this regard. And uh, I try to be provocative. For example, I've written reflections on things such as when is it the right time to not forgive somebody? Or what are the spiritual issues of being transgender or the spiritual issues of homelessness? Uh, so um, the book, I hope, is going to be very meaningful to people. Uh, so it's a coffee table book. And uh, the event where we launch this is Saturday night, December 4th at uh, 6 p.m. at the Summit Hotel. We're bringing in a dear friend from the project, Neshama Karlbach, who's a famous Jewish singer who's sold over a million albums. And we will have a program uh, introducing the book and then Neshama will perform two sets. Excellent. Well, it should be a great launch. You can pick up tickets for it and, of course, pick up the book as well. Daniel Epstein, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much, Betsy.